Well, welcome to part two of the course. If you remember from the first part of the course, you primarily investigated some of the theoretical aspects of what makes an assessment good, and that is that good assessments are valid, reliable, and fair. Well, in the second part of the course now, you are going to apply that theory into practice. And the great thing about this practice is that it is practice that you will do pretty much every day on your job. If you're already a practicing educator, you know that assessment is part of everything that you do um, in one way or another almost every day. And if you are studying to be a professional educator, you will soon learn that the skills in developing or evaluating the potential value of existing um, assessments is a highly valuable skill that you will use regularly. Now, one of the most important things you're going to learn in part two is actually found in the course notes, and it is the assessment development guide. And I, I have mine in my notebook. Um, I'm going to cut this part out. So it's it's right here. It's this document right here, and it's it's um, it's many pages long because it includes a lot of rules on how to develop good assessment items, a lot of rules and a lot of examples of how, what, what rules to follow when you're developing um, new assessments. So there are two really important projects associated with part two. And the first project is the one that I wanna talk about right now. And that's the project where you are going to evaluate an existing assessment and you're going to apply the rules that you're gonna learn about and uh, determine which of the items from an existing assessment are, um, are, are well designed and which could use some revising in order to make them uh, better designed. And the whole point in trying to make assessment items well designed is because you want to maximize the probability that the items themselves measure exactly what you want them to measure and that you avoid errors like type one and type two errors. Errors that, that might mean if somebody performs well on the item, they can't really do the perform the skill the way you want them to. Um, that would be a, a, a type one error. It, it, the assessment shows that, that the learners can do something, but in fact they can't. And a good example of that is just a multiple choice item where, they, where the correct answer is so obvious that people will, or the learners will pick it regardless of whether they really know what it means um, or, you know, um, or understand the underlying things they need to understand in order to really know how to do the thing you want to measure. So, um, so those are the rules. But what's interesting about this first project, project number two, is that the existing um, assessment items that you're going to use to evaluate are actually not existing yet. And what I mean by that is that you are going to use artificial intelligence to create these items first, so then they'll exist, and then you will um, you'll evaluate or assess them um, using the rules that you're going to be learning more about. So it is an existing assessment, it's just that it doesn't exist yet, and it's not an assessment that you actually create. It's one that the machine creates. And there's a good reason why I want you to start investigating artificial intelligence, because you will soon find when you do this project that there is a, a real chance that artificial intelligence is going to have a big impact on teaching, teaching and learning. And I was, my eyes have been opened to the use of artificial intelligence for the last year or so when I have been reading more stories and watching more, um, more videos with educators who are grappling with this new tool. And the one I'm going to have you investigate and use for this project is called ChatGPT. It's developed by, um, by the OpenAI organization. And using that tool, you're going to input some prompts. And I have a whole video about this. You're going to input some prompts and the system is going to generate some assessment items for you. And then you're going to evaluate just how well they were de um, developed by the machine. And this is such a great example of a really good use of artificial intelligence in the classroom. 
because I was first introduced to artificial intelligence when I was flipping around some TikTok videos about a year ago, and I saw a video of a teacher who posted that her students were using this new tool, this, this new artificial intelligence tool to develop um, to develop or create their, their reports for their class. And, and it was obvious to her that these were machine-generated reports. And rather than just say to the students, you cannot use the, uh, artificial intelligence, she embraced it. And she, and she said, um, I want my students to be able to evaluate or critique what artificial intelligence creates. And so she just flipped the use of it on its head a little bit and I think that in, that's a perfect example of one of the best ways to approach emerging technologies in education. It's just to embrace them if you can find a valuable way to use them um, to help promote your own agenda or your own um, learning outcomes. So that's what we're going to be using. I'm really excited about this project. And, um, and I have information about the project and a few examples. I have a video of how the tool can be used. Um, and, um, and in the meantime, you're going to read chapters six and seven in the course text. You'll do one reflection over both chapters and that will be due in a couple of weeks. And then you will re review the information in the, um, in the assessment development guide, uh, particularly as it applies in project number one to what we call, uh, cons selected response items, and those are items where the, um, the, the learners have to select the best possible answer from, a, from, a, from choices of answers. And you're going to try to use that sort of avenue of assessment to help um, you measure exactly what it is you want to measure um, in order to determine whether your students have learned what you want them to learn. And so that's project number two, and I hope you enjoy it. I think it's a, a very cool project. And if, um, as always, if you have any issues or concerns related to accomplishing the project, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you.